all systems go. Clear for liftoff. going on everyone welcome to the ship it nation pga show for the players championship fifth major i guess is what they call it but either way yeah. the, the contests on DraftKings are massive so that's all i care about i don't give a shit whether it's the fourth fifth sixth major big contests all around the industry very excited to dive into it and yeah tambo not here he's on the beach um but uh, we upgraded this week we got our guy pat mayo subbing in first question to you out of the gate will we get a tambo video topless picking winners on the beach yes or no i hope so like uh, the, the week that i did it i hit a winner so i don't see why tambo yes. would it's like he's leaving money on the table not doing it really yeah yeah i'm waiting i've got my fingers crossed i'm hoping we get the tambo shirt i mean obviously you and him are very close i mean he saw the success you had with that video instantly it was jake knapp right jake knapp got the job done that was the guy yeah yeah jake knapp and man uh i tried tried jake knapp last week did not work out uh did not work out so well it might be time to uh hop off that uh that train well maybe it's time to jump back on the train now that everyone's jumping off the train it's a good point it's a good point we'll see we'll go through we'll, we'll talk all about it um obviously uh, appreciate all the support one big announcement right out of the gate is our guy degenerate 75 is back tonight on his channel doing his emergency stream so excited to see him uh, back in the saddle doing some PGA content. So he'll get that out. I believe it's 8 Eastern uh, tonight. So very excited to see him back. And, um, yeah, toss it over to you. You got that new partnership, that new deal with Underdog. And I know you got the big uh, drawing coming up pretty soon. So talk to the people about that. Yeah, I'm with Underdog Fantasy now. Uh, you've probably heard of it. If you do not have an account at Underdog Fantasy, go to underdogfantasy.com, type in code MAYO, get yourself a match deposit of up to $100. That helps support the show. And listen, I, you know, it supports me, supports Tambo, keeping our show going over on my network, the Mayo Media Network. And if you hit my newsletter, which is completely free, it's got a ton of info in it as well, uh, or one of the descriptions of the shows or podcasts, there's a survey in there. Now, you need an Underdog account to do it, so code MAYO, sign up if you don't have one. Now, go take the survey. It's a 15-second survey. If you do the survey, you are then entered in a $5,000 draw. There's going to be five winners, $1,000 each, and we are giving out the winners on Sunday evening this week. It's uh, my introduction to Underdog. It's a Players' Championship bonus for everyone that you know, I, I worked it into my deal that they have to give away like $20,000 to my viewers throughout the course of the year. So this is uh, one-fourth of that right now. I like that payout structure too, by the way. Uh, you know, not 5,000 to one person, you know, five winners of $1,000. We were talking about it before the show. DraftKings done a phenomenal job this season on the payout structure for their PGA contest. Your deal with with uh, Underdog, very nice payout structure there. Get get five people a chance to win $1,000. I like that. Yeah, and all you need is an account. So even if you live in a state where you can't actually play Pick'em or anything like that, you can still sign up with an account under Code Mayo, by the way, um, and still get into it. And like, if you don't have the ability to bet in California or Texas or one of these other states, that you can go in and play the Pick'em or do the drafts with this. We're doing a bunch of best ball major drafts. I'm going to do a few players drafts. What time uh, is DGen stream tonight, did you say? Uh, 8 Eastern. 8 Eastern. I know uh, you guys have that other time zone. So what it would be? Uh, 9 your time, right? Yeah, yeah, we're in the Atlantic time zone out here, yeah. you know, closer closer to Europe than everyone else. But I'm actually live on my channel uh, the hour before that. So starting at 7.15 p.m. Eastern time. So that's sort of like the pregame show to the return of DGen. So I will happily hop off after 45 minutes and throw it over to James on his channel. Yeah, very excited to have him back. Make sure you guys get in the underdog promo. It helps us out as well. I mean, uh, you've been you know, probably the, the biggest ally to the Ship and Nation community since we launched. So that's definitely helps everybody. So make sure to get in there uh, and get that underdog account, use the code. Uh, in terms of Ship It Nation content, we have our promo going uh, Masters15. Uh, if you use that code, it gets you all the way through the Masters. Like Tambo's a marketing genius. He has all this shit set up. 15% off any package and it stays with you for life as long as you do not cancel uh, that package at any point gets you all our content. You can do PGA only. You can do uh, all the sports, all access. You can do a six month, a, a weekly, a, a monthly, whatever you want. So there's a bunch of different options 
uh, over there. So use that code MASTERS15, and then we'll be taking one person that uh, selects a six month or an annual package and giving their money back. So it's a, a hell of a deal. If you're on the sidelines waiting, now is a good time to get in. I know uh, some marketing uh, tilts people really, really hard. Like they're coming here for PGA, but you got to understand, like we're doing these shows for free. So you got to get the marketing stuff out there. I mean, that's just, that's how this business works. You know, free shows, got to generate some revenue somehow. So hit the marketing. We'll get to the PGA stuff. Anything else you want to touch on before we kind of dive into this? Yeah, it's always just best not to talk about it. If we're going to talk about what a genius Tambo is for his marketing strategy and his planning, uh, it wasn't such good planning having your wedding anniversary on Players Week, now was it? Yeah, well, the only thing he can do to correct the situation, again, is I'm going to go back to the opening. I want a topless video of his ass putting out his core. Like he, I know he has to be tuning in at some point. Tambo, we need a shirtless video of you talking about your core plays, at least one or two. You don't want to give away all your cores. One or two core plays topless it just has to be done that's the only way to make up for missing the players right i mean i think that's the i think that's a fair substitution or not and just save the people from anything like that someone in the chat asked if uh, underdog is available in louisiana pickums or not but i believe that drafts are very similar to uh, pennsylvania if you live in pennsylvania where you can't play the pickum uh actually let's see no louisiana is not even on the standard fantasy list either so yeah louisiana tough break for louisiana for playing michigan fantasy. as well i don't get it can't do it uh, well i i know the that. michigan thing because that okay. that's a they it's a lot like ontario they conflated gambling law with fantasy law because i run the gotcha. the mayo cup the race for the one yeah. and done so we we're trying to get into each of these states to make sure that yeah. that contest was legal the fees to be in michigan were astronomical like the, they don't even Brutal. make sense I mean, and you said Ontario is the same? Yeah. Man, I used to build my spot too, by the way, uh, 19 and 20. Like every single person, I'm about 30 minutes from the border. So like every Friday, Saturday night, you'd hop over the border, get hammered, and then come back. And it was a, it was a fun ride for two years. Ontario, uh, I can't remember the name of the street. There's like a street with just a ton of bars. And it was a spot to go. It just popped in my head. But a uh, long time ago. Now I'm old. And, you know, All right. Well, I, I got some losers to give out. Let's do this. All right, let's hop in. First thing, weather. You seen anything weather-wise? I know on the show we always talk about it. Tambo does a phenomenal job of you know playing these uh, wave stacks regardless of the weather. For me, you know, I don't see anything this week in in terms of weather, um, so I'm not playing any sort of advantage that way. Do, do you see anything different? So no, uh, although the winner has come from the AM wave 13 of the past 15 years, although the top okay. 10. 56 44 percent and really we're trying to get guys inside the top 10 along with the winner in this tournament now i did my show with raza earlier today over on my network and one thing that i've been doing with tambo all year long on that show is i've just been blindly playing the wave stacks and ben and i were talking like tambo and i have talked it through before ben and i were talking it through and i've won four gpps on DraftKings this year like i'm up a lot of money playing golf almost as much as i've been down the past seven years trying to get digging my way back up to even here but it's been a really good run for me and i'm not doing anything really different now uh tambo has helped me with my tournament selection that's been a lot better for me but the one thing that i've been doing is that every single week i am just blindly playing am pm stacks and pm am stacks and it's not so much that you might just get lucky with the weather that's great so then you have these pockets of players that are all clustered together and the other thing that it does it takes away a, if you have like one of the things that I used to really come into a lot of issues with would be taking like the same three guys at the bottom of every line. I was like, oh, you know, I have a di diverse three guys in the 6K range. I'll just sprinkle these guys at the back end of any lineup. And inevitably, if one of them misses the cut, then you're absolutely screwed. What this does is take three or four guys and put them into pockets down there as well. So they can only technically be in half your lineups at max. And then the other set of lineups doesn't have them in them. It gives you a unique lineup almost instantly because, you know, at, most people just aren't even thinking about doing that, especially on non super like very clear weather weeks yeah. and it gives you a different pool of players you have fewer decisions to make like if you're between that guy or that guy well let's just cut out half the field to begin with and then start making lineups from one half and i feel like the lack of decision making and me trying to stress over this guy or this guy or how much of this guy or how much of this guy as tambo says play them both but this way i don't have to that decision's already made for me and it's really helped me yeah, a couple of things that you touched on there, which which I think make a ton of sense. You're immediately different than the field at that point, because even when there is a distinct weather advantage, like you see it, you know, we see it from time to time throughout the year where you know to load up on AM or you know to load up on, on PM Thursday, guys. 
nobody goes all in with it, even when we have these extreme weather advantages. So without the extreme weather advantages that everyone knows about, if you do something like this, you're immediately different than the field. And you see it all the time where it looks like the wind's going to be the same all day long. But for some darn reason, the AM guys shoot a stroke and a half better than the PM guys. And it's kind of unexplainable. Well, that way, by building this way, you're immediately hitting an advantage that no one knows exists. That's the first thing. And the second thing that you touched on that we've been talking about a lot on these shows, finding the contests that fit you best. And, um, you know, I made a change personally in the contest that I play um, as well. You know, last year I was really focused in on, on 150, making, you know, 150 teams and, and going that route. Starting this year, talked to Tambo on the show a lot. Like I switched to really focusing in on 20 entries, which I had a ton of success years ago, kind of went back to that. And similar to you, I'm having my best start to the PGA season that I've ever had. Um, and, uh, you know, the results have been good. So two things, I mean, just look at the contest you're entering, look for different ways you can get yourself different than the field. And, you know, obviously it goes a long way and it can work. So you always need to reevaluate kind of what you're doing as a player. I think it's very important. Yeah, and the AM PM wave. I mean, I would say that there probably is a bit of a lean to the PM AM um, if you were to pick one. Although there doesn't seem to be a distinct advantage, only because towards the end of the day on Friday, as it stands right now, it looks like it's going to get a little bit cloudy, and there is rain coming at night. That those guys might just get like if the rain just shows up three hours earlier because it's fucking Florida, then yeah. you know those guys are just sitting there, you know, twiddling their thumbs, waiting, and then they have to come back out on Saturday. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case, but. That could be the option. Or you could spin it the other way and be like, oh, that's great. That means these guys get to rest, come back out in ideal conditions the next morning with wet greens and just fire at every pin yeah. and start making yeah. some birdies. So it it's, goes back to the whole, I don't know. If I knew who was going to win, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I would be owning a private island with all of my winnings every single week. So what are the things that I can control? Ownership, I can somewhat control, at least within a range. The weather, I can't control the weather. I can look at a forecast. But now I've situated myself where I can play both sides a little bit, which no one else is doing. And as, uh, again, just looking at the chat, as someone pointed out, it was Devin in the chat said, you know, ironically, all the PM AM stack guys this week has 90% of the players I like. That's everyone. You go look at the guys garnering all the ownership this week. They're all PM AM guys. So just naturally building AM PM means your lineup is so much different than everybody else's. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just an immediate way to, to get different without having to really dive into ownership. And, you know, is this guy really going to be 30 or 20 percent? Like none of that stuff matters. You're immediately different than the field in terms of roster construction. You know, outside of weather this week, another thing that kind of stands out to me, uh, which I was curious to get your opinion on, is, yes, you know, Scotty Scheffler is going to get some ownership this week. I mean, the guy is phenomenal. Uh, we talked about it last week, the, the putter change. I kind of made the joke, and I don't even know if it was a funny joke or not, but I was like, I don't give a shit if this guy's going to, like, a little tight plastic uh, putter set. Like, it's got to be better than uh, what has been happening with the putter. And sure enough, he went out, putted well, won the tournament. He'll get some ownership, but outside of him, it looks like really spread out ownership from what I'm seeing. Are, are you kind of seeing this, the same thing? Yeah, but I think clusters will emerge. Like, Scott, yeah. like, what do you think Scotty comes in in either the big 25 or the big five? Over under, I if think, I said over under 30%, what would you say? I'm going to say under, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about a little bit more. I think people end up selling themselves on this balance build this week because there's a lot of reasons a lot of question marks in this upper tier, which we'll kind of talk about all these 10 K guys. There's, and that's typically not the case. And then you throw in the, the 12, eight price tag, which is higher than we've seen for the ceiling price. I personally think it comes in a little bit lower now. I mean, is he going to be 18% owned? Hell no. I mean, he's going to probably be like at the lowest, like 25 ish, but I think it, it, it has a good chance of coming in below 30. So I, I think it's going to be right around there. And if that's the case, mm -hmm. I think, Right. That if it does come in below, that means Justin Thomas probably gets up around 22, 25 percent as well, because he becomes the next very logical option to take to start your lineups with. Because no one really likes Rory this week. No one really likes Xander. No one really likes Cantlay. Uh, and no one really likes Hovland. Uh, people will play Joffley like the, all those guys are going to be played, but not to the extent of Scheffler, then Thomas, then those four in terms of an ownership tier. Or they play Thomas and just fade all of the 10K guys. Then you have like Zalatoris and Hideki. And then you go to like, 
you know, Burns and Lowry at the lower nines, like those four guys in the nines seem to be the one that everyone is gravitating around. So I do actually think that Scheffler comes in higher than that, just in the face of the other options that no one likes. Like I'm looking at Fantasy National right now, uh, and it just it's our user base that's generating all of this. There's been over 10,000 lineups generated so far. Now our ownership projection on Scotty right now is around 20%. But when you look at the actual amount of lineups he's been generated in, that people are potentially exporting the CVSs and uploading, 32%. So I think that people, everything I've heard about this week is just how Scotty can't lose. And if people do think that once we start getting the general populace in, that they're just going to take Scotty and live with Scotty, Hoagie, and Gim. Those three guys on a team are going to be like the majority of teams, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they definitely stand out. I mean, the one, I'm glad DraftKings put this price at 12 8. I mean, if they come in and put Scotty at like, 12k 11 9 11 8 somewhere in that range he's definitely getting massive massive ownership because people are going to look at the other options in this top tier and they're going to say man i'll just find the money to get to scotty well to find the money to get to scotty i mean you're paying a premium i mean it's almost thirteen thousand, but you can definitely make it work we have the 5k range uh as well this week which DraftKings brought back which i think should kind of be a mainstay in my opinion i, I like that 5k range i mean entice people to go down there and, and play some of these risky options but yeah i don't know i, I think people end up going with a, a balanced build more times than not and I could see Scotty coming in a little less than that 30 number. We'll see. But a lot of it is because of those question marks. You got guys like, you know, Rory, who hasn't been in the greatest form. Shoffley, expensive price tag. 11-3 for, for Xander is higher than we've seen. I guess we'll just kind of hop into this tier. Justin Thomas is the next guy that people feel pretty comfortable with. The game has been phenomenal outside the one week. Of, what was that? The Genesis when we played with Tiger and played like absolute shit. Can't lay, you know, one good week basically in a month. And then Victor Hovland's been a disappointment basically all season long. So, yeah, I think it's Scotty. I think it's Justin Thomas. And then I could see like Rory, Xander, Cantlay, Hovland averaging maybe like 11, 12 percent for, for all four of them. Do you, you think that makes sense? Yeah, I think that Rory and Cantlay actually come in below 10 percent. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. And, and I mean, I, I like Rory the best. Like if you're going to take the shot, take the shot on Rory. The game's been rough. I mean, it, it has but not that, been. Hold on. That's not true. He just led everyone tee to green two weeks ago. He won in Dubai earlier this year just because he doesn't. But where did he finish in that tee to green anymore? Like, where did he finish? What? Two weeks when ago? That, that, when he led the field in tee to green. Uh, I think that he was 14th. Okay. Yeah. But like you need him to be. 21st. In, sorry. 21st. 21st. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah, I get right. that. I get that you need yeah. him to be good. But his like floor, I mean, he finished 66th at Pebble Beach after he got that stupid penalty, which was just nonsense. And then he's finished 21st, 21st, 24th. Before that, it was fourth, fourth, third, sixth, first, seventh. And then through the Middle East earlier this year, he was first and second against good fields. Like if he's going to come in with nothing and the only thing that's holding him back is that he's a shit putter. Well, did you not play Scheffler last week because he's a shit putter? And Rory, we know, is a better putter than Scheffler. So you, you like the little Rory. I mean, I got, if he's under 10%, like I'm going to, I'm going to try to get some of him and I'm with you. I think he has a chance to, to be in that range. Like, and he obviously is a guy that can just turn it on and win an event, but it's, it's been a little rough. No, no, listen, I, I'm saying he's not peak Rory at the moment, but yeah. if we're trying to construct some lineups here, like he is the captain of the AM PM stack. The good thing about the PM AM stack that Scheffler's in it. And so is Thomas. The great thing about it, if you want to make your lineup somewhat unique by just taking the guys from PM AM, all of the chalky guys that just kind of fit with Scheffler down the list, if you go Scheffler, like 7K, 7K, high 6K guy, and then back up into the eights are all in the AM. So uh, if you do the PM AM, you're just naturally going to be a little bit different because you have guys like Hoagie is in the AM. Uh, who else? Adam Scott is in the AM. You have Cebes is in the AM. Griot's in the AM. EVR is in the AM. Uh, Doug Gim is in the PM, so he would actually go along with him. But a lot of the guys that are frequently paired with Scheffler this week are all AM tee time. So just by doing the PM AM stack yeah. using Scheffler that way, it will make your lineups far more unique than just taking, hey, these guys all rate out really well. Yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, I'm with you. So I, we talked a little before the show, and I told you about the new segment, uh, the Keeper Cut segment. The chat loves it. Interactive. First guy, Keeper Cut list in this range. Let me get, put it in here so people can see it. It's going to be Victor Hovland. So give me your thoughts on Hovland. He's kind of the last guy in this range I'm deciding on. I like to make some cuts. I don't want to play everyone. Uh, Victor Hovland um, is the Keeper Cut option. What do you think? Cut. He's my fate of the week. Cut. Really? Yeah. Feel good about it, huh? 
No, but I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of with you. Like, I don't want to, man. I, I could honestly see myself just playing Scotty in this range, and then just being dumb. Uh, actually, JT. I got to play some JT as well um, because he. Do you think there's anything to that? Like the one bad week was was playing alongside Tiger, like as a distraction. Are you buy into any of that? I mean, I buy that guys have bad weeks. It's golf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hard game. I, yeah, I get it. So, all right. Well, so Hovland, I'm putting it down. You get, oh, as the co-host, you get two uh, votes. So you get two votes to the chats, one vote. So it's looking like a lot of cuts. So it looks like Hovland might be out of the player pool this week. So Yeah, basically um, anyone in terrible form coming in. And anyway, listen, I'm not saying go 100% Rory here, but if he is a single digits, and as a part of that stack that I was talking about, AMP, I'm like, I'll end up with a little – Rory, a little Hovland, a little of those guys as a part of me building lineups that way. But when I go and I like, I'm not building every lineup those ways. So when I make my like combined wave stacks, like the, both those guys aren't making it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pull up, uh, let's see if I can do this. I'm not, uh, let's see, we need, I'm going to pull up the projections here and kind of walk through it that way a little easier. There we go. All right. So we've got the solver up with the Ship and Nation projections. You guys can follow along as we walk through the 9K range is. Uh, I think pretty loaded top to bottom. I mean, you can kind of make the case for most guys uh, in this range from Zalatoris all the way down to Lowry. Uh, Zalatoris, obviously a guy that plays well on tough courses, great form, fourth and second. Hideki, uh, did you buy into the whole back thing last week with Hideki? Because, I mean, I didn't end up playing him, um, oh, yeah. but he looked fine. You oh, yeah. I mean, he, he claimed he had a numb leg. I bet against him in head to heads. Yeah. I hated him first round, yeah. took him out of DraftKings lineups. That was dumb. I just want to acknowledge something here. Sexy Beast in the chat says Rory gets top two to win every tournament, and he's not even close. More like top 60, just about. Like, that's not even close to true. This perception of Rory is fucking insane that if he doesn't win every tournament, he sucks. It's really weird. No other player gets that. Like, I, I don't understand it. Well, in terms of fantasy when you're I, I get what people say like oh if i pay this much for a guy i need him to finish like top five that is like not true like you it's more important what the other guys do around him in this pricing structure so if if rory goes out and finishes six you might be disappointed from a fantasy perspective perspective but if scotty finishes 15th xander misses the cut jt finishes 10th cantley finishes 40th and hovland finishes 30th then Rory is going to be an excellent play in fantasy and you're going to be live to win fantasy contests. So the important part is you can't go in and say, I need this guy to finish in X place. It's what the other guys do around him in the pricing structure. If that's what he was kind of referring to, to in terms of fantasy. Sure. But he, I mean, Rory has a top 10 finish in 14 of his past 17 events. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, it, yeah. I mean, if he's coming, he's going to be lower owned. There's no doubt about it. I mean, and if it's single digits again, I'm, I haven't decided what I'm doing with his ass this week, but man, if it's going to be seven, 8% and I can play 13 and be close to doubling the field, like that might be something I'm interested in. Uh, and the price tag 11, six is going to keep people off of him because he'll just find a way to Scotty. So yeah, it's interesting, but I did fall for the Hideki thing as well. I faded him last week and he looked perfectly fine. Um, Wyndham Clark at nine, seven, uh, Homa nine, six, uh, good, what good, uh, finishes here the last couple of years, Spieth, uh, Morikawa, Ober, Burns, Lowry, Young. I mean, there, you can make the case to play all these guys. For me, my favorites are, are Zalatoris, um, Sam Burns. I'm going to keep playing. Uh, he's one of those guys that hot or cold, he runs hot and cold and he's hot right now. I mean, opened up round four was a triple, I believe last week and just it totally took him out of contention prior to that triple. He was right there. I'm interested in Burns and I've been playing a lot of Cam Young. I'm going to stay on him. So those are kind of the three or four guys that I'm focused in, um, focused on. What, what do you, what do you like in here in this nine K range? Uh, I, I got the three that I really like. I like Hideki. I like Burns and I like Ludwig as the three, uh, like, and then, so I'll really be building around those guys as peripheral pieces around Scotty and Justin Thomas, a lot like you. And then I'll probably add in Wyndham Clark, Shane Lowry, and Cam Young. I feel like I should be playing Morikawa, but he just he hurts my feelings too much every year at this course. Oh, it's painful because on paper, I mean, it, this should set up well for him, right? For his game, like this should be a good good track. Um, it's just the the perfect. Out. It is the perfect course for Morikawa and Tom Kim, and just they don't got it right now. Yeah, I mean, and it seems with Morikawa, he'll have like this this one really good round, and then it will all kind of go to shit. Like last week, it looks like I mean, it seemed like he almost just 
gave up and said, I'm done. I'm out. I mean, it, it did not go well for him last week. I mean, what, what are you shooting that round two? It's a crazy high number, wasn't it? Yeah, he was like two under going into the day. He was the one playing with Rory. He shot 80 on Friday. Yeah, 80. <laughs> insane. Absolutely insane. Um, all right. So in regards to this range, uh, I know what your answer is going to be because you already said you're on this guy and it's going to be Hideki, the keeper, keeper cut auction. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to say to to keep them, and uh, I, I can get down with that. I think I can keep him in the player pool this week and feel all right about it. Yeah, it feels like he's going to be super high owned, but I just think sandwiched like right in between Clark and Zalatoris. He'll be higher than Clark, but I think Zalatoris will come in higher, and Hovland will always garner more ownership than you think. Whatever you project him for, he will be higher, just like Fleetwood will inevitably just be higher than whatever the projections say because people just love clicking those names every single time. But with Hideki, I feel like. Listen, I'm going to play him. I bet him to win. So I'm in on Hideki. But I do feel like this is the week where he gets us all back after last week, after we all faded him mm -hmm. because of the injury news that he pulls out one minute before his tee time. I would not play him in a single entry. Yeah, I think with Hideki, I think there's a chance, not that he comes in low on, but I think it could be lower than projected for one reason. And this, it's kind of like the highest price tag we've seen on him in a while. I feel like people are price sensitive when they're playing Hideki. Like if he's in the 8K range, they're in. If he's in the low nines, like maybe close to 10K, I, I think people could could say, yeah, no thanks. I, I think Zalatoris gets more than him. I think Homa gets more than him. Um, so I, I think he has a chance to maybe get squeezed a little bit at 9,800. Yeah, Homa's a really interesting one because the results are really good, but they're all chipping and putting based. Like he gained with his, he gained 0.1 strokes gained on his irons at Riviera. That is the only time this year, since the century, sorry, since the Tournament of Champions, where he's gained with his irons. He's lost off the tee, like, significantly in three of his past four. Like, that's not... Well, the results are good. The form isn't... It's sort of like the anti-Rory in a weird way, yeah. where he's putting his way out of bad play. Now, maybe that means he's hot with the chipper, with the chipping and the putting, and the ball striking will return. Usually, that's not how it happens, and the putter just goes away, and it's a really terrible scene. So that's why I'm off Homa, if anyone's wondering. Yeah, and then the, the other interesting guy, and I, I think you touched on it, is Shane Lowry. I mean, we were paying, you know, peanuts for him recently. Well, back-to-back -back solid wins. He's in this 9K range. Um, again, a course that should fit his game pretty well. Um, initially this week, I was like, no, I'm not paying 9-1 for, for Lowry. But I, I've kind of come around on him a little bit. I think he'll be in the player pool for sure. What, what are your thoughts on him? I, I'm in on Lowry. Just don't play him on Sunday showdown. Yeah, gosh, that was a disaster. Play him Thursday, <laughs> Friday, and Saturday. Just don't play him yeah. for the final round. Don't play him round four. Yeah, it's not a bad option there, that's for sure. All right, so it looks like we are, oh, let's see, the votes for Hideki. A lot of cuts. Cut, keep, cut, keep, lock. Cut, keep, keep. Pretty 50-50, but uh, you're going to go ahead and split that tie. We are going to going to roll with our boy Hideki this week. He's going to stay in the player pool and hoops player pool this week. Going into the 8Ks, uh, in terms of perception, I think it kind of falls off a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of these guys in the 9K range are going to be appealing, going to get ownership. And then, like, the first name you see, Jason Day, uh, is a guy that people don't love playing. Fleetwood fucked a lot of people last week with, what do you have, like a 10 on the, the six hole, hit in the water twice, and, you know, you do that, you're done. 8,800, but has played well at this course. Uh, Thigala at 8.7. You got Russell Henley playing well, and he's a guy that I do think gets ownership. People feel comfortable with him. He can find fairways. Uh, Tony Finau, question mark. Sung Jay kind of bounced back a little bit. Uh, Corey Connors continues to make cuts, but a lot of middling finishes. Fitzpatrick's playing like shit. You touched on Tom Kim. Should fit him well here, but, man, he's been a disaster. I think the bottom of this range, you know, the, the three names at the bottom, Benny on. Like, I've been playing a lot of Benny on. Um, I'm not going away from him. Min Wu at 8K. Then your boy Siwoo Kim all the way down there at $8,000. So um, I don't know. It's kind of a polarizing range, I'd say. Uh, I think a lot of the ownership is going to be at the bottom. Guys like Benny On, Siwoo Kim, potentially Corey Connors. But uh, there's a lot of volatility in this 8K range with guys like Finau, Thigala, you know, even, even Fleetwood. So what are your thoughts here in the 8K range? 
I love Fino, and I, I mean, I bet Henley, but I understand that he's probably going to come in. I mean, I, maybe he ends up getting squeezed because people just be like, oh, I could save money if I play Ben Ann instead and get up to a better guy in the nines or something like that. So maybe he comes in a little bit lower than you think. And like I said, I always think that Fleetwood comes in a little bit higher than people think. So maybe that evens itself out a little bit. So Fino is my favorite play. Then it's Henley. And then it's probably Corey Connors, uh, just for the absolute, so like, you know, just kind of like lock him in for a top 30. And if he actually makes some putts this week, that becomes a top 10. Like, that's a pretty good, it, it's a lot like Henley in a way. He's like Henley who can't putt, but is a slightly better ball striker, is that you rely on these guys to hit fairways and not make 12s at this course, which, you know, it, just get, what do you think the six to six percentage this week is going to be? Because historically it's very, very low at this course. It's got to be very low. I mean, I, I think it, it just has to be. The volatility here is insane. You can chalk up, you know, quite a few big name favorite guys missing the cut. And as soon as that happens, the six to six just completely tanks. I mean, it has to be low. Yeah, I mean, I even recommended a, uh, I took the top seven guys on the board to try to make a miss the cut parlay uh, to round Robin. I don't think that all seven of them are going to miss the cut, but like the top two price guys here last year, Rory and Rom, both missed the cut. And yeah. Rom was playing amazing coming in. Then he misses a cut. Then he goes to live, but he won the Masters in a month's time afterwards anyway. So it really didn't matter. But we see so like, it's so volatile. Like you said, like Scotty has better, uh, longer odds to miss the cut this week than he does to win the tournament. Like, that's actually insane. Like that, yeah. that doesn't prob probabilistically that doesn't make any sense. No, it's crazy. Just goes to show <laughs> how well he's playing, how the public perceives his ass. I mean, it's uh, that is a pretty wild statistic. They're not statistic, but odds. Those odds are nuts to, to think yeah. about it in that manner. Uh, I agree with you, though. Uh, Corey Connors is probably my favorite in this range. I always like Corey Connors. I, you know, the game is not far off. Obviously, just needs to make a couple fucking pots. Like, just be decent. Um, the ball striking has been great. And um, I agree with you. Like I see a top 30, 35 floor with man, if he can make some pots, he's a guy that can contend at major. So I, I really like him a lot. He's a, a main piece of what I'm doing this week, but the keeper cut option is going to be Mr. Tom Kim, Tom Kim. You kind of said the course fits him well, but he hasn't been playing well. That's for sure. So what should we do with Tom Kim? $8,100. He's a cut for me, unfortunately. I, I'd really like to, I'd, I mean, he might come in at like 2% because literally no one wants anything to do with him at this point. But I, if you want to be a contrarian, you can do it for me. He's a cut from my my main build. Yeah. See, and the ownership is definitely going to be low, like you said. I mean, these guys at the bottom, like Benny On, Siwoo Kim, even Corey Connors, like we talked about, definitely get some ownership so i i think you know if deciding between those guys and tom kim people are going to those other guys tony Finau is an interesting one for me um i don't know what i'm going to do because i don't know if the course necessarily sets up well for him but again he does have that uh winning upside 8500 what's the uh ownership looking like on on Fino? I'd say probably right around 10 would be my guess, yeah. but just I, because the results really haven't been there, although I do think he's been top 20 in his past three events, it's just he's putted so in the field over the past 24 rounds, he's 135th in putting. However, he's third in approach, fifth in ball striking, and fourth tee to green. He's actually having his best ball striking run of his career in 2024, but dude is missing four foot putts by like five feet to the left. Like it's insane how bad he's been putting. The first time he had gained strokes putting was actually last time we saw him, which was in Mexico of all places on these slower greens. It's a bit wet in Florida right now. So maybe they can't get these greens up to the speeds where he had been missing so many. I mean, that's the dream, right? That he continues the ball striking. And all of a sudden it's just one of those weeks where he makes putts. And we've seen those weeks where he can make putts. Yeah. And it just feels yeah. like everyone's just, yeah, like if it comes down to Henley or Finau, people are going to click on Finau. If they could save the money and go to Connors, they'll go to Connors. That he might get left by the wayside unless it's people running stat models because they'll see like, holy shit, this guy rates out well. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting range because like, again, there's a lot of volatility. You got a guy like Thigala who can come out of nowhere and just contend. Um, you know, Fitzpatrick has been a pretty popular golfer, much more expensive. Uh, even in these loaded fields, he's been dog shit. You know, Sung Jay has been bad, but bounced back a little. It's a, I think it's an interesting range uh, for, for sure, this 8K range. And there's a few guys that will get some ownership. The lower end guys, the closer to 8K, and then like Henley people will be on. But outside of that, um, I think a lot of people will even try just to get that 9K range if they can. There's more stability up there. So interesting range. 
uh, for sure. 7K, less golfers, obviously, because they added the 5K range, which, again, I'm a bit... Do you like the 5K range? Because I do. Uh, I, I do, because I usually find, like, yeah. one or two losers that I really like yeah. that I can plug into my lineups. Like, I have my guy this week that just... I just pray he makes the cut. And that's how, yeah. I'm, like, even at the uh, at the Cognizant, when I won the $150, like, I had Chan Kim at 5400 bucks or whatever he was. Like, I just needed him to make the cut, and that was good enough. Down there again, I think, right? He is, but uh, Carson <laughs> Young is down there, and he's the play. I like Carson Young. I'm a Carson Young guy, so we'll we'll uh, we'll agree when we get down there. I'm gonna. There's a few guys I like in that 5K range. We'll kind of touch on uh, when we get down there. Um, you know, playing as much Scotty as I am, you got to sell yourself on a few options down there, and there's some I think that are playable. But we'll hit the seven Ks first uh, before we hop in. Uh, do us that favor, hit the like and subscribe. Helps us out a ton. Brian Harmon has had success here. Of course, sets up well for him. Seventy nine. Keegan Bradley uh, snuck by last week. Very popular. Keegan Bradley was a guy that was pretty surprising in terms of ownership last week. Got way up there. I think he was like a, a top three owned guy and snuck by the cut line, finished like 30th. Harris English uh, is part of that group that fell apart um, on uh, in round four. Hoagie, you kind of touched on him. Uh, playing phenomenal golf. Good result last year. He's going to be owned at 7,800. Uh, JT Poston probably a little overlooked this week. Eric Cole, uh, Adam Scott fucked a ton of people last week, but uh, I think they'll go back to him. I think they'll forgive and forget. Uh, Chris Kirk, Keith Mitchell, uh, Cebaz, Milano Grio. I, I, I've been playing Grio, and he's been playing well. Seventy four hundred for him. Um, you know, Ricky, no thanks. Uh, EVR continues to play pretty well. Seventy three hundred. Then it kind of falls off. I think a lot of these guys in the lower sevens. Uh, we'll go pretty overlooked, including including your boy Jake Knapp that, that made you a nice uh, little pretty penny there uh, from the beach. So I think a lot of people stick with the uh, upper sevens here. I think the lower sevens goes uh, a little overlooked, but uh, some solid options in this uh, 7K range. Uh, what are you seeing here? Yeah, I think you need to kind of pick your poison here. Like you said, I think that people will go back to Cole and you kind of hit on the key name. Like I bet Harmon to win. I bet Hoagie to win. I'm going to play those guys. But JT Poston, I think, is the name. He's the perfect pivot off of Tom Hoagie, and he comes in with basically no ownership. The biggest corollary course to Sawgrass is Wyndham, where he is he either won or come in second place. He came in second place there, and he won the Heritage, another Pete Dye course, another short course he won at um, TPC Deer Run as well. So it's just kind of the perfect course for him. He's missed the cut the past two years, but who cares? Like, everyone misses the cut here. He was T22 the two years before that. And again, this is a guy who was like 28 to 1 a month ago in tournaments. Now he's a hundred and something to one. Like it didn't change all that much for me. Played poorly at Honda. No shit. He always plays poorly at Honda. It happens every year. He was top 10 at Riv, top 20 at Pebbled, top. He was 11th at the American Express, sixth at the Sony, fifth at the Century. Like this is a guy with five top 20 finishes and eight starts this year at a course that is much better for him. The stats on approach have been horrible the past few weeks, but he is someone that can get by a lot like Homa with his putter if need be, or he can kind of click it back. He's still hitting a ton of fairways, which is great. Uh, I, I think that he has the potential here, especially at the low ownership. Like if you're starting to make your pivot stands, these are the type of guys that I would want to go to rather than being like, Oh, well, I really like, I can't play Scheffler. He's too owned. Let me play Xander instead, who I really don't like. I'd rather just play Scotty, but playing with JT posted instead of Hoagie. Yeah. Yeah. Poston has to be low on with the names around him. Like, you know, people are playing Harmon, you know, people are playing Hoagie, you know, people are going to play Cole, Scott, um, you know, probably even Chris Kirk. Like there's just no way Poston gets any sort of ownership. And he was on a nice little heater prior to the last couple events. I mean, he still made the cut, but the finishes have not been great. And he's at a course where, um, you know, I think it sets up well for him. So, I, I mean, Poston has to be, what, 2 3 4% owned somewhere in that range? Or lower, no, to be yeah. perfectly honest with you. It just He's a yeah. name that you just people just look over. Like, I asked someone yeah. about him the other day. He's like, I didn't even realize he was that much. I didn't even see him there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I mean, because it is a price. I mean, he is 77. Yeah, so it's showing like 2 3 4 somewhere right in that range. And, uh, man, yeah, I, I kind of overlooked him a little bit myself, to be honest with you, before kind of just going through this. Um, but I think it makes sense. Uh, do you have any interest in those guys in the bottom? I know we kind of teased Nap a little bit. He's down there at 71, Justin Rose, Cameron Davis, Jaeger, any of those dudes? Yeah, Jaeger and Davis for sure. 
I like, and I probably will play Jake Knapp. I, I want to see what the ownership comes in because he might get residual ownership coming through. Like if he in, ends up as a double digits type of guy, which I don't think that he will. Like I haven't projected no. at like 5% right now. I'll play some Jake Knapp at that ownership because the, the approach was actually great last week. He just legit could not drive the ball that didn't land in the water. He just got, yeah. and maybe he learned from it last week that, he was far more reserved off the tee at Honda when he knew all the water was lurking because he didn't need to overpower that course. His first time at Bay Hill being such a long course, I think that he felt like he needed to challenge a lot of those par fives and he took on too much water and just you know one slight degree off and all of a sudden you're swimming and you're in such a huge hole. Sawgrass is a lot like PGA National in that way where you don't have to get aggressive off the tee. Dude can hit like a driving iron off every tee like Bryson did that year and just not worry yeah. about it and continue the hot approach. Like he still gained over two strokes on approach. That was top 15 in the field last week. He just happened to lose 11 strokes off the tee. Yeah. Well, he got caught by that sixth hole as well. I think he put two in and then he uh, hit one like 250 yards. So he's laying up at that point. I think he did. He took like a 10 or maybe even 11. He took a big score on that six hole. So a 12. Um, he took a 12. 12. There it is. Yeah. 12. <laughs> even bigger than I had anticipated. So I, again, I, I think these guys at the bottom, very low owned um, keeper cut option is a guy that neither of us mentioned and um, he is a Canadian. So curious to get your opinion cut. on Adam Hadwin. Out. Cut. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of leaning towards cutting Hadwin's ass anyway, but he's up there. Well, I mean, he has to go overlooked similar to the JT post and stuff. Um, you know, after talking through with you, I think I definitely prefer Poston now. I mean, Poston was a guy that, yeah, I currently don't have in my player pool, but I would be interested in adding him. Hadwin, I'm good with cutting. So you, you, and the chat agrees with you too. A lot of cuts coming in for Hadwin. Cut, 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 gone. Hadwin cut. So that that no one likes Hadwin. So all right, well maybe maybe I should add him back in though now because everyone yeah, feels so strongly I, I, about. It. Yeah, but people will just look at he's made the cut at the players in his last six times. He's been he was top ten last year, thirteenth year before that. And he's not playing bad golf. He's not a bad option. It's just I just prefer the guys around him for just pure upside purposes. Yeah, I think I agree with you. All right, we'll keep it moving. Two more tiers. We'll go through, and it's gonna be it'll go a little quicker because less options down here. But I I will be down here. I'll be in the six K range. I'll be in the five K range. I think there's legitimate guys, and a lot of people are excited about Denny McCarthy right at uh, sixty nine hundred. Um, I actually think I prefer Nick Taylor. I, you know, you, you are against the Canadians and I'm in on the Canadians. Like Nick Taylor's always been my boy. 69 for him. Hostler playing great. Doug, Doug Gim though is a big talking point this week. Doug Gim is going to get ownership. He's playing phenomenal golf. $6,800. I think he's played well here too in the past, right? They have good course history or. He does. He does have good course history. He played in the yeah. uh, the group with Justin Thomas the year that Justin Thomas won uh, on okay. Sunday, uh, and he just kind of it was flatlined a little bit. But I think he was a stroke or two off the lead going into Sunday that year. Uh, he's played Pete Dye courses really well. Obviously, he's playing great golf right now. He's an easy fade if he actually does come in at like fifteen percent ownership. I like him a lot, but he's no like. There are like legitimate quality players surrounding him here. And maybe he does level up and goes out and wins the tournament. And, you know, great for the Gim Reaper. I love him. Uh, I would be happy to see him win. But like Pavon is $100 cheaper. That's crazy. Uh, just with the way yeah. that he's been playing so far this year. Uh, yeah. Billy love Marshall. Him. Love him, by the way. He's, I mean, I, he's one of those guys, like I always say this about certain guys. If you've been playing him, you got to stay on him. And I've been heavy on Pavon every week there's no way i'm going away from his ass this week at sixty seven hundred dollars like so in on pavon yeah horschel in florida uh he popped back up all of a sudden at the classic at pga national he popped up at the sony earlier this year the short courses where he can use his use his fairway advantage to his advantage not put it in the water keep it clean and just like not i mean listen i'm not expecting billy ho to come inside the top five he might come like t31 or something like that i don't like him as much as ekroth though ekroth's at 6500 we just watched him do this and win at a very similar course he's played well at pete die courses in the past he is one of the most accurate players in the field so again uh, along the lines of Russell Henley and Corey Connors and Adam Scott now we have Billy Horschel and Austin Ekro guys that their upside might not be to the very top, 
But their downside, listen, they can all miss the cut. It happens. You yeah. hit one bad shot, you're done. But it feels like their floor is a little bit higher to just survive to the weekend. And that's all I'm looking for right now. I'm just looking for guys down here to make the weekend and hopefully they start making some pots and then yeah. they do have upside. But they need to get there first. And that's always the hardest part of this tournament is finding those ones. Like, what do you do with like, everyone's on Aaron Rye, it feels like, at 64, because he's another one who just hits every single fairway, great ball striker, can't putt. But Andrew Novak is right behind him, who has been awesome the past three goes top tens in each of his past three starts and it seemed like people wanted him at the beginning of the week now it seems like no one wants to play him well, i'm playing his ass i'm definitely playing him i mean how well I'll, i don't care like I, I love guys that are on these little heaters like conf, golf is a game of confidence and when you get it rolling man it, it, sometimes it can be hard to slow it down i'm in, definitely in on him you know if deciding between novak or rye i am definitely on novak over rye uh, I'm fine playing both, you know, probably not in the same lineup, but I'm totally fine playing Novak and Rye, keeping them in my player pool. But if deciding between one of the two, it's Novak for me over Rye. And then there are three guys down here at 61 or six, 6,000, 61 and 62 that I am playing. They'll be in the pool and they all present different types of unique skills, but they all have one common trait is that when they make the cut, they finish really well. So either they might come dead last. And that's the volatility that they have. That's why they're 6,100. But I know just Ke Kevin Yu is one of them. I know that. Ke Kevin Yu is most definitely one of them. Like, why wouldn't you play Kevin Yu right now? Yeah. yeah, he might come 133rd. But in the other starts, when he doesn't miss the cut so far this year, third, sixth, ninth. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of uh, validity to that point. Like you said, like, you know, some of these guys down here, the goal when you're playing a guy at 6K is, can he make the cut? That's priority number one. Do you think this guy can make the cut? And a lot of times you're thinking, all right, this guy's going to be 40th, 30th, you know, going into the weekend. Can he move up the leaderboard? Can he get into contention? Not even into contention. Can he get into the top 15? Kevin Yu has proven when he makes the cut, he has the chance to win tournaments or be in contention to win. And that is kind of the goal in playing this game. Get as many guys in the lineup as possible that you think can win. I, I think Kevin Yu is a great play at 6,100. Yeah, so there's him. Um, then there's Taylor Pendrith, uh, who actually did play well here. And people think of him as a bomber, plays well at bombers courses. That ne hasn't necessarily been the case. He's been pretty bad the past two weeks. But here's his stat line since last year, since the swing season started. Miscut, miscut, ninth. Miscut, tenth. Miscut, eighth, fifteenth, third. So when he yeah. makes the cut, he makes a run. And Bhatti is the other one. Like, Bhatti is really accurate off the tee. He just gets way too aggressive with his approach shots. And that's what he did at Honda. Like, he was playing well, then water, water, water. And it probably ends up going the same way here. But again, in these soft conditions, you might want to take a chance on some of these guys who can go hunting at flag sticks if they can get the ball to stick. Because with Bhatti, you see it. Like, he switched to the long putter. He putts a little bit better now. And you're going to know after, like, nine holes whether he's going to be there or not. Uh, he yeah. might be seven over after nine holes. That's always a yeah. possibility with old Akshay. But if he gets there and he's feeling it, dude will start firing at pins. He's, I'll like, what, dude. that way. Like, yeah. you, can, you can watch him feeling it. And when he's feeling it, he's playing well. And when you don't got it, he don't got it. And you'd rather... Him, you'd rather have a guy that does the the seven over, you know, through the first nine, than miss the cut on like the the last hole going into the weekend. I like, it's such a better feeling to know you not even have to sweat it. Like you know, this dude's just out. Like missing the cut on the last hole, it's a defeating feeling uh, for for your lineups. One last guy though. Uh, any thoughts on uh, Mav McNeely? I've been playing a lot of him. I intend on uh, staying on him this week. Yeah, it makes sense. You always play Mad McNeely at places that have small greens, and this does have some of the smaller greens on tour. It's around 5,500 square feet per. Like His approach play is horrendous, like it always is, but he's driving the ball well, he's chipping well, and he can be one of the most electric putters on the PGA Tour. Uh, he's not going to make my player pool, but I understand why yeah. people are playing him. All right, before we get into the 5K range, we're just going to hit on the marketing points two more times. I'll do mine, and then... Uh... Pat will do his. We got the promo going, Masters 15. Um, you can use it on any package over at shipanation.com. And the reason it's titled Masters 15, because if you choose a monthly package, it'll take you all the way through Masters Week, which, man, the prize pools are big for the players. I can't imagine how big they're going to be uh, for the Masters. So definitely look forward to that. You can use this code on any package. Uh, if you do use it on a six-month or annual package, we'll be selecting one person and giving them their money back on that package so head on over shipitnation.com use that promo code masters 15 uh and then also uh pat mayo has his 
partnership deal going on with Underdog. So tell the people how they can win uh, part of that five thousand dollar giveaway. Well, I just noticed I'm frozen on the page, but uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's a good look for me. So I apologize for that. I'd have it's to log the thumbs out. Up. Something it always happens in Tampa. Like if you hold your thumbs up, thumb up at the screen or something, it freezes. I mean, maybe that's what it is. But yeah, promo code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy. You can help out me. You can help out Tambo with all that stuff. So the support over there is very much appreciated. Uh, you know, we need to collect uh, some new people to come over and play on Underdog, and we're gonna have a you know contest every single week the old pat mayo experience open is shifting over there we already ran a best ball draft for majors using that filled within three days i think so they were uh they, they priced that one a little bit small but uh, i am giving away five thousand dollars as well for the players championship you can find that in the description of my videos over on mayo media network or you can find the link in my newsletter as well five winners one thousand dollars a piece but you need to have an underdog account to do it you just need to fill out a survey that takes about 15 seconds and you are in it plus it gets you into some other pat mayo experience things that might be coming down the pike including pick em contest uh like season long sort of contest with that with underdog money up top plus the ability to win your entries every single week anyway so a lot of that stuff would go a long way as well Look at me. Just, yeah, it looks like I'm, I'm giving you, because I'm trying to hold you up here. <laughs> Give me your plays, Hooper. I'm taking you out. <laughs> no. It's the thumbs up, though. It keeps happening to Tambo. Like, for some reason, one of the versions of uh, StreamYard, like if you do the thumbs up, it just instantly freezes. So maybe I need, maybe we both need to update our game capture HD. Maybe that's what it is. I've had nothing but problems with this camera that I've been using. So maybe I just need to do something yeah. else. Yeah. All right, uh, 5K range, and you know, obviously I'm a fan of the 5K range to talk about every week. I think it should should be here to stay, and it has been most weeks. Um, obviously, a lot of risk down here, but reward, because if these guys make the cut and can kind of work their way into the top 20, have a big advantage. Um, you know, it gives you the, the opportunity to roster more Scotty Scheffler, or if you want Rory, or, you know, uh, if you plug in one, let's say you just plug in like a, well, let's put in random person, Chesson, you're immediately at 8,900 per spot. You can do, you know, a, one of these 5K guys and then, you know, five guys in the 8 and 9K range. There's a lot of different ways to go if you want to roster guys in the 5K range. Uh, a couple names that stand out. Taylor Moore has made every cut this season. Um, the finish is not great. But, again, I mean, you're just hoping they get through and kind of move up the board uh, a little bit. I pl usually play a lot of Adam Shank. It has not been great as of late. Um, but – he might stay in the player pool. Mark Hubbard's a guy I'm always on. I'll stay with him. Um, and then there's some risk, riskier guys at the bottom. Uh, Robert McIntyre, I mean, I have a problem with Bobby Mack. Like, I played so much of him last year. He's competing in the strongest fields. Now he just freaking sucks, but I just have to continue on with him. You mentioned Carson Young, whom I like as well at 55. Uh, ben Silverman's been kind of playing well. Echeverria, uh, Lee Hodges. Uh, I'm not saying I'm playing all these guys. These are just guys that I think you can potentially look to. And if you want a, a full punt all the way down at the bottom, um, for me, it's going to be Mr. Harry Hall, 5K flat. So, you know, eight to 10 guys I think you can consider down here. Does a lot for roster construction. Um, you already mentioned Carson Young. So uh, I guess go ahead and, and dive into him and then uh, anyone else uh, down here that appeals to you. Yeah, I mean, it's really just Carson Young. Like, you could go with Seamus Power. You could go with Chesson Hadley. Uh, I think those would be the three. But realistically, it's Carson Young for me. He plays Pete Dye courses really well. He's made every cut since the Sony. He was eighth in Mexico. And the only reason he played very poorly at the Honda is he lost, like, over four strokes in terms of short game, which is... I mean, he's not great around the greens, but that is just a pure aberration for him. The, he's one of the more accurate players on tour. The approach has been amazing so far this year like that's what you want accurate guys off the tee guys who can light it up on approach and hopefully they can make some putts and you don't really find the combination of all those things in the five thousand dollar range all that often so like even by like my simulations he has a 20 percent chance to come inside the top 20 this week which yeah. is crazy yeah. um that just to try to look at everything which i mean he has a 55 percent make cut rate which is crazy for a $5,000 guy. Like normally those guys are like 30% or something like that. So the numbers really like him, which, you know, inevitably means he's going to be in dead last place, but that's well, you got, well, you got one, one thing in your favor though. Uh, Cameron Young is also in the field and apparently he plays better when Cameron Young is in the field. Yeah. Cause people get all fired up because they always bet on Cameron Young and they see C yes. Young rising up the board. They're like, Oh, here he comes. And it's like, Oh no, yes. who's this mini man? That's that's Carson. Yes. Young. So yes. I would, I would caution against Harry Hall, by the way. 
dude sucks <sighs> off the tee. Yeah, I played him. Uh, when was the last event? I played him, and he made the cut. And I'm a loyal. I'm loyal to my my guys he, that he I made. The, he made the cut in Mexico because it? you can't go out of bounds in Mexico. <laughs> Maybe it was a, a waste management. Waste management. I played him. He finished forty first at the waste management. So uh, I got to give him a second chance. I think Pat. Another place where you can't go out of bounds. Okay. Well. You're like he, he has not gained on the field in fairways since the 2023 Fortinet, which is 13 tournaments ago. Yeah. yeah. 5K though. That's 5K. great. I mean, that's you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully your five or six can really compete. <laughs> yeah, maybe. What, what does that get you? So I, I pulled it. So a 5K guy get 9K per roster spot. Spot. So if I can get five dudes to finish in the uh, top 15, I'll be set with my Harry Hall dead last lineup. There we are. Not too bad. Yes. Anyone else in the 5K or just kind of sticking there with Carson? No, it's Carson. And then after that, it'd be Chess and Hadley. And then after that, it'd be Seamus Power. Cool. All right. Well, kind of went through everything, talked about some roster construction, some weather, hit each tier. Uh, you are going live at what, 715 Eastern, you said, on uh, yep. your channel? Yeah, 715 Eastern on Mayo Media Network. I will hopefully uh, be more lively looking. Than I am in this picture where I am frozen. Uh, and then I'll be doing that for 45 minutes leading into the DGen 75. Welcome back, stream pump to see James. Yeah. Hey, very excited to see James back. He'll be on his channel uh, at 8 Eastern. So make sure you tune into that. He's excited. I talked to him yesterday. Very excited to be back. I know the people are excited to have him back. So cannot wait to, to watch that. He does a phenomenal job on those streams. And uh, man, very excited to have him back. Any final thoughts uh, before we uh, get on out here? I mean, let's let's go, Justin Thomas. Let's get a win. I'm with you. I could I could definitely do that. Justin Thomas uh, is going to be a, a big part of what I do this week. So if Justin Thomas wins, I'll be excited, and hopefully, I'll have a lot more money in my pocket come Sunday. Um, make sure you get on over shippingnation.com. Make sure to tune in tonight, at Mayo Media Network, seven fifteen Eastern, and then DGen at eight Eastern. Check out all the content. Good luck in your contest this week. Looking forward to seeing those Ship It Nation logos at the top of the leaderboard. We'll be back next week.